Salom! Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim! Nagy szeretettel és tisztelettel köszöntöm Önöket a Magyarországi Zsidó Hitközségek Szövetsége nevében. Külön tisztelettel köszöntöm Jakov Hadas Andersman nagykövet urat, Izrael Állam Budapesten akritált nagykövetét, Móse Sinó Szuhares urat, az Izrael Labdarúgó Szövetség elnökét, a diplomáciai testület és a sajtó megjelent képviselőit, de elsősorban minden izraelit, aki ebben a csodálatos zsinagógában mai rendezvényünk színhelyén megjelent. Készítettem egy beszédet erre az alkalomra, aztán idejövet úgy döntöttem, hogy nem ezt mondom el, hanem elmondom mindazt, amit Érzek, éreztem tegnap, este, éreztem, érzek ma, és éreztem október 6-ától kezdődően, ez alatt a bő egy hónap alatt. Azt hiszem, hogy az a sok, ami ért bennünket október 7-én, az nem csak Izrael határain belül volt, hanem az egész zsidó világon belül, és itt, nálunk Magyarországon is minden tisztességes ember lelkében, és főleg a magyarországi zsidó közösség lelkében. Minden nap, minden órában, minden percben érezzük azt a feszültséget, azt az aggódást, amely izraeli testvéreink irányában kell, hogy megnyilvánuljon, és ennek egyik remek példája volt, a tegnap esti Izrael-Svájc felcsüti mérkőzés. Felemelő pillanatokat éltem át, sokat magammal, több ezer ember, és közöttük több ezer zsidó hittestvérem jelenlétében, azokban a pillanatokban, amik a mérkőzést megelőzték, illetve a mérkőzés során is. Jelzésértékű volt a világ felé az, ahogy kivonultak a csapatok. Emlékezzünk vissza, az egyik csapat játékosainak kezét fiatal kisiskolások fogták, az izraeli csapat kezét nem fogta gyermek, de ugyanakkor azt a demonstrációt éreztük a játékosok részéről, hogy bizony fogják az ő kezüket is, csak éppen most hiányoznak azok a gyerekek, akiknek itt kellene lenni. Ugyanezt éreztem, és érezhettük az izraeli himnusz közös éneklésénél is, és ugyanezt érezhettük akkor, amikor egy-egy megmozdulás kapcsán, egy-egy jó megmozdulás kapcsán a közönség szinte egyöntetően izraeli zászlókat lebegtetve szurkolt a csapatért. Végül kiküzdöttük közösen azt a kiváló eredményt, azt az egyes eredményt, amely lehet, hogy pontokban nem jelent egyik csapat számára sem olyan sokat, mármint azon két csapat számára, akik játszottak, de Izrael állam számára, a zsidó nép számára, a zsidó közösség számára mindenképpen jelentős volt. Jelentős volt azért, mert megmutattuk azt, hogy mi a békepártján állunk, még akkor is, hogyha harcolunk. És megmutattuk azt, hogy élni akarunk, és élni is fogunk. Ezt mutatta az az akarat, amit a, amit a sportolók részéről éreztünk, és ez mutatta az az odaadás, ahogy a zsidó emberek és nem zsidó emberek ott harcoltak, vagy szurkoltak, a csapatoknak, különösen az izraeli csapatnak. Ügyeim és Uraim, szeretném átadni a szót az Izraeli Labdarúgó Szövetség elnökének úgy, hogy szeretném hangsúlyozni, hogy ez az ország, mint ahogy érzik, mindenhol a világon, és Izraelben is, ez az ország, ahol most tartózkodnak, és ahol mi, mint egy százezren zsidók élünk, Szeretik a sportot, szeret, szeretik a, a, az egyenességet, ami a, amit a sport ad, 
a, a kiállást, amit a sport ad, és szinte mindenki szakember, minden egyes szurkoló szakembere a saját maga sportágának. Így Magyarországon azt szokták mondani viccesen, hogy mintegy 10 millió szövetségi kapitánya van a magyar válogatottnak. Magyarul hozzáértő emberek látták tegnap is a mérkőzést, ami nagy érvezetet okozott mindannyiunk számára. Szeretném átadni a szót az Izraeli Labdarúgó Szövetség elnökének, Mósesino Suárez úrnak, és azt szeretném kérni tőle, hogy adja át a csapat a nemzeti válogatottja számára azt, hogy mi együtt vagyunk, nem csak tegnap voltunk együtt a, a stadionban, hanem szombaton is ott leszünk, és minden nap ott leszünk, nem csak a csapat mögött, hanem Izrael népe mögött is. Köszönöm szépen, hogy meghallgattak. Shalom lekulam, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, dear friends. The decision to take upon myself the position of the IFA president based on my great belief in the power of football to change lives. It is not just poetic person, but rather a, a worldview. A belief that must be translated into significant actions. Football, as I remind myself every day, bring together people from different backgrounds, different religions, different worldview, and many other differences. When they enter the dressing room, a human melting put they emerged as a unified team who shared the purpose is greater than the variance of its member and greatly empowered by it. On October 7th, Saturday morning of Simchat Torah, over 1,400 citizens of my country was, were murdered only for being Israeli. Jewish, Muslims, Christians, and foreign nationals. This tragedy completely changed our lives. Words cannot describe how painful we are and how deeply it affects Israeli society. As a nation that rose from the terrible Holocaust, we establish a country upon the understanding that there is no other place on earth, on earth for us. We now find ourselves, 75 years later, fighting once again for our, for our independence, for our right to exist. The football community has also paid every price. A former player, Leo Rasulin, was murdered in the party in Rim, as well as the granddaughter of former national coach, May Naim Sherf. Referees, football fans, and players in the youth leagues lose their lives in the barbaric attack. We will prevail. That I can assure you because we don't have other choice. And the football, my dear friends, plays main rules on this. From the, moment, from the minute the war broke out, the IFA took upon itself a major rule of supporting, unifying and encouraging the Israeli society. We raised donations, visited hospitals and IDF bases, conducted special tournaments for children who survived and were evacuated from their home, donated hundreds pairs of football shoes and balls to people who during and after the war will go back doing what they love most. Our national teams, players, and football clubs remind anyone we ignore or twist reality what happened 
on that cursed day. The IFA, understand, IFA and I understand that the need and the privilege of supporting those in pain while ensuring that they rise back stronger and more determined using game in order to once again get back on their feet. It is not just the IFA, but the entire football community. I see the amazing effort by football clubs in Israel, each contributing what they can. Football fans are divided to those in uniform at the front and those who work to encourage and casually help restore towns and threaten the social resiliences. It is also worthy to mention the foreign clubs and players who were decent and brave enough to voice their support for Israel and condemn the terror. The dressing room of humanity has enough space for all who share the same values. Its impressive and important conference is being held at the symbol site, especially today, the Budapest Synagogue. We are here thanks to the goodwill and great efforts of the Hungarian government and its leader, the Hungarian Football Association and the Israeli Ambassador of Hungary. The suffering, the, the tragedy, and the rebirth of the Jewish people is strongly bound to this place. More than 500,000 Hungarian Jews were murdered in World War II by the Nazis. 77% of all the Jewish in the country. Besides the evil that the world experienced during the Holocaust, there were always brave people who risked their lives to save another. Over 6,000 Hungarian men and women were recognized by Yad Vashem as righteous among the nation. Hasidei Umot Aolam. Herzl Tivida, later be known as Benjamin Zev Herzl, was born in Pest. In his well known book, Alten Oil, he presents his Theonot vision and he needs to for establish a Jewish home in the land of Israel. Today, I stand in a beautiful Budapest, proud and excited to represent the state of Israel, repeating aloud the words written by Herzl. If you will, it's not a fairy tale. Im tirtzu enzo agada. My friend, we want to live, prosper, develop, and grow then, now, and forever. I'm Israel Chai. My name is Adi Rubenstein, and I will host this uh, special event uh, by the World Jewish Congress and the Israeli Football Association. You know, it's difficult times for us all. Israel is Jewish around the world. And uh, we found a new home, a sporting home, away from home in those uh, Bad times. Uh, also, as you can see, we left an empty chair to the ones uh, that are always on, my, on our hearts and our thoughts. Um, let's start with the panel. I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Yaakov Adas Endersman, Israel Ambassador, Gustav Beinart, and Mr. Moan Meiri. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, I will start with you. Uh, what can you tell us from, uh, let's say, behind the scene, bringing the Israeli national team here for two very important matches against Switzerland and Romania? You spoke a, li a lot about sports diplomacy. So if you can explain a little bit about it, we will be more than happy. It is a complicated issue. 
Uh, things that are, there are things that are more discreet, others are less discreet, but what it needed, it needed uh, several agreements, I mean, or abilities. Uh, the professional ability, which means that you have the facilities, you have the time, security, and the goodwill of, uh, of a government. And of course, uh, the readiness of uh, the Israeli Football Association to send their national team uh, into this country or another country. And uh, well, and uh, we achieved it also with the consent of our security uh, operators. Uh, so it's, uh, I wouldn't exaggerate too much how difficult as to how difficult it was, and you know part of it. But on the other hand, it doesn't, it's not something that which goes without saying. And today we are here, and as you mentioned, sport and diplomacy are more and more connected together. I think that uh, sport has become, first of all, a very significant part of our lives, daily lives. Second, uh, it's not only a tool, but sometimes it's also a target. And third, in the changing or modern world where the digital, digitalization controls our life or tries to control our life, uh, sports gain an extra uh, weight or importance because, as you know, everyone has his own Twitter account or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Everyone is expected to say something about anything, even if he or she do not have the faintest idea what the hell they're talking about. And, and as I told uh, someone who interviewed me, may I, have, I might have two followers in a good day. These people might have 10 million followers, so whose word is, more, is stronger, mine or theirs? Okay. Uh, Mr. Meir, good evening. Um, you are here with like both hats. Yes, you are part of Maccabi Tel Aviv Football Club, and of course, as part of the football of the Israeli Football Association. How hard is for us nowadays, uh, on the, especially in the football scene, but all over sports around the world, regarding us as a Israeli teams and national teams, and, and especially in the European competitions? First of all, thank you very much for this event. It's a good opportunity to say thank you, big thank you to the ambassador and uh, the Jewish community here. Um, and uh, we highly appreciate everything. Um, I had in the last two years a few meetings uh, with the president of the Jewish Congress, uh, Mr. Ron Lauder. And I think it was two years ago, we had a discussion and he told me that the Jewish are 16 million from 8 billion in the world. It's 0.2%. But crimes based on religions in all the world is 50% against Jewish. I was shocked. And then I started to to understand what world are we living in. Um, I must say, I'm a judge in the player status chamber of FIFA. I'm a member of the legal committee of UEFA. I have friends from all over the world. The president of the Friends Federation and everything. When I come to this meeting, when we are doing decisions together, I never feel it. But suddenly in one day, you feel strange. Uh, this horrible day, terrible day, um, is uh, in the last one, more than one month, uh, we are, I think, I think, under a big trauma, and everything is mixed. Um, one of the stories that I had uh, one day during the war now, I received a text message from a close friend, Jordi Koif, and he is asking me about an operator in Tel Shomer Hospital. I asked him what happened, Jordi, and I knew it, that he has a Jewish family, a cousin, that his son served in Givati and uh, was uh, seriously injured during this war. And I see Jordi, I see his mother, the wife of Johan Koif, 
the legend, they are following every day what's going on. I must say, uh, we got also very um, warm messages uh, the day on the 8th of October, I received a message from Alejandro Dominguez, the president of the Common Ball, the vice president of FIFA, very supportive message. The letter that we received from Mr. Zeppelin, um, I had the correspondence with the owner of Crystal Palace, Steve Parrish, and the Jewish ownership there. So, of course, all the staff that worked for Maccabi Tel Aviv all over the world, Ivich, uh, Soza, Garcia, all of them are on a daily basis take care of us. Um, we saw a big support uh, from Germany. Uh, I'm not surprised. We have, I'm the head of the International Affairs Committee in the Federation. We have three members that live in Germany. And from the first moment they started to work in Germany, and they were very welcome with all the events. Uh, what Dortmund did, Bayern Munich, Werder Bremen, all these clubs, I know that Eintracht Frankfurt are going to do something. Um, I saw Thibaut Courtois um, taking care of us, doing, the, doing it publicity, and I must say, unfortunately, take a risk. Uh, when I ask about Sergio Roberto, I know, I heard that he donated money. But a lot of people who want to do it publicity, they are afraid of their family. They really feel the sweat around the world. But we know about it. Uh, I had a conversation with the president immediately when it happened. What will be our strategic? And the president said, and I agreed, we will not beg for anyone to show us the condolences. Condolences has to come from a place that you believe in it. So we don't want any favor from anyone, but we say a big thank you, and we highly appreciate the one who show it. And uh, I'm saying that in general, I try to, to give you some points uh, from, from the way that I see it. If you want, I can continue about the situation to come to Hungary. So for me, you know, there are two countries that we, have to, we had to decide where to play. You know what are the two countries? Yes, Germany and Hungary. Germany and Hungary. And really, really wanted us to play. The ambassador, he pushed me for Maccabi Tel Aviv. Of course, he's a fan of Maccabi Tel Aviv. I know it for Don't say a long so time. Loud, you know. But he pushed me that Maccabi Tel Aviv, I, I, I feel how you want us to come. I feel the warm. And all Maccabi Tel Aviv knows it. Mitch Golda, everyone. Ben Mansford, everyone. But if you look at it from history perspective, Hungary, as far as I know, the first state that was had the law regarding anti-Semitism before the Nuremberg laws, and then Germany, I don't have to speak too much. These are the two countries that are doing huge efforts to host us. I think these countries learned something from the past. These some countries understand what is the past. How they are trying, in a way, yes, there is no way, but there is, they are trying in a way to show the sympathy now. And it's not only speaking, it's by acts. The Germans, when we announced them that we are not coming, we had to, say, to, say, to send a few letters to apologize that we are not coming. They really wanted it. But for me, everything is mixed. The history, what's going now, and I'm trying to understand what is the motivation for all of this. So, Mr. Gustav Beinert, maybe you will answer what is the motivation for hosting the Hungarian sport, hosting us here in your country. You're part of Ferenc Varos, you're part of the Football Association in Hungary, you're part of UEFA, FIFA, handball organization, swimming pool organization. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for saying that you found home away home, from away home. And thank you very much uh, for those people, many of them are in this room, in this synagogue, uh, who have done a lot to make this event happen. 
Um, it would not have been possible without the security we can offer, without the world-class infrastructure we can offer, and without the friendship of the Hungarian people. The sporting relations between Israel and Hungary go far, far uh, behind. I just want to like to mention that in 2019, the European Maccabee, Maccabee Games have been organized in Budapest and Hungary. And we have been extremely proud that, and thank you for the decision that you have voted a vote of confidence, friendship, and cooperation this time in times of uh, crisis and uh, bad times to find a home away from home. Um, as you have said, uh, Adi, uh, I represent uh, Ferenc Varos Football Club and many, many others. And uh, I would say that in addition to security and world-class infrastructure and friendship, you can always find flexibility from decision makers in Hungary. Um, we are honored. We are looking forward to expand the relationship with uh, Israel Football uh, Association and with other sports. And Hungary will be always there, especially in the times of crisis and in the, in the times of need to support, to understand, and to be always a second home for you. Um, I think, as you have mentioned, uh, the birthplace of Theodor Herzl, uh, there have been deep roots of the Jewish people in, in, in Hungary uh, who have contributed uh, uh, to the successes of the State of Israel. And may I just recognize Agnes Keleti, who is 102 years old and who is a living memory of that friendship, support, and sporting relations between Israel and Hungary as we can witness today and hopefully witness in the future also. <clears throat> Yaakov, tell us a little bit about, um, you've been here for three years, right? Almost four. Well, almost four. four. Tell us a little bit about the relationship between Hungary and Israel, not only through the eyes of sports. Well, the, first of all, not uh, through the eyes of sports. Sports is important, don't forget. <laughs> but uh, the relations are, they, they stretch on a variety of domains, uh, economic, cultural. Don't forget that in Israel, until today, there are about 300,000, at least 300,000 Jews who are of Hungarian descent, whether it's first generation still, or second or third. And you know, uh, and I, even I didn't have any idea to what extent the Hungarian culture was rubbed in, in, in the Israeli culture. And we don't know about it, but if you wa read once a fine Kishon stories, for example, you find all, the, all these uh, types with, the, with those names. And when you come to Budapest, you realize that all the names are names of streets because they symbolize very important people in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. But so he took the names from Budapest and he, uh, and he planted it in the Israeli culture. Then, of course, you have the issue of tourism. Uh, it was about two years ago, or that uh, in, uh, two, yeah, two years ago in November, that. Israelis occupied the first uh, place in Budapest when it comes to um, overstay in hotels. Which means that we are tiny, and you said we are only 0.2% of, uh, of, of the population of the world, but uh, you forgot to say that we are very noisy, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we go everywhere. So the fact that uh, in ordinary days, uh, you have between six and seven flights a day from Tel Aviv to Budapest, and usually they're all fully booked. Uh, speaks for itself, the Israelis like to come to this country, they like the atmosphere, they like the people, they like the food, they like the shopping. Some of them also like the casino, you know, uh, and, 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 and this is uh, another aspect. And then, of course, we are trying to develop uh, uh, other aspects uh, or other uh, layers as well. First of all, Hungary has the history of being a medicine, a medical power in the past, 
uh, when it comes to pharmaceutics and it, when it comes to training uh, doctors. Uh, you have, I think, several hundred or if not 1,000 Israelis studying here uh, medicine. And uh, the level of Hungary when it comes to medicine is considered to be the best in Europe from the point of view of the Israeli uh, test that you have to, the exam that you have to take in order to get the Israeli license. So there are a lot of things that uh, we are doing, we can do um, high tech. We were interrupted by the corona. I think that now we're starting to, to re, uh, increase our efforts. Um, the war has put many things to on, the stay, on hold, but I hope that uh, we'll be able to get back to it. So relations are, you know, um, there's so many layers, and you know, I don't want to take the time from others, so it's not difficult to describe. I try to do it in a nutshell, but I know that it's not, it, it doesn't cover everything. Okay. Uh, so, Mohan, can, can you give us a, a quick, uh, a brief, regarding Israel football right now, situation through Europe, both team and, and, and national team? Um, I will try to be careful because these things are still discussed these days. And next Monday there will be a board meeting of the Management League in Israel to decide uh, exactly how we are going back. A decision was, uh, has already made that uh, football in Israel will start play on the 25th of uh, November. I think the second division uh, are starting on the 17th of this, Friday. this week. Um, it's very important. It's very important uh, to show that uh, uh, we will not give up. Uh, even if, if no one you know can stop. And uh, I'm not speaking about other aspects. A lot of people who are rely on this industry. But I think the major things is to show all the world, and especially our enemies, that these events will not stop us. Um, it was very emotional yesterday to see the children from the south. Um, and they hold yellow signs. Where are they from? These yellow signs shows they are proud of the place they came from. They still put it, they want you to know we are from Faraza, we are from Netiva Asara. And although a lot of these places will need a recovery of a few years, they still belong these places. They still belong to Israel. I think it was a very strong moment for me with the national anthem. For all of us. To see these children mention exactly the place they are coming from. Um, regarding the history of the Israeli football and Hungary, I would like to add, in May I was here, I was invited um, together with the ambassador. Uh, I remember the owner of Bologna from Italy was here. We had a ceremony for Arped Weiss, mm -hmm. and a Jewish, a legend football player, and then a legend coach, who was the coach of Bologna. Mm -hmm. Okay, this I could do in Wikipedia to read everything. Mm -hmm. I was shocked, I must say, from the president of Bologna, who said that every year there is one Memorial Day in Bologna club in which all the players of Bologna are learn about ARP advice, the Hungary Jewish legend, player and coach that was murdered in the Holocaust. I was here a few years ago in a ceremony together in Mac with Maccabi Tel Aviv um, in the stadium of Ferenc Varos, it was before the match, uh, regarding Istvan Toth. Yes. Istvan Toth was not a Jewish but he saved a lot of Jewish. And 
It means a lot for Maccabi Tel Aviv. I don't know if all, you know, all of you knows, Maccabi Tel Aviv plays with yellow because of the yellow star in the Holocaust. So even all the foreigner staff, everyone, were very impressed of this. Uh, and then one day we received a request. Uh, the president of uh, Ferenc Varusht wanted to meet us in Maccabi Tel Aviv Football Club. He came to Israel together with you. And he, we had a meeting in which he described us his fight against anti-Semitism, amazing fight. He went against the extreme, the ultras uh, fans here. And I was very impressed. We said big thank you. And since then, we still have good relations. It's very symbolic for me that uh, Abu Fani, an Arabic Muslim player, play in the national team, played yesterday. He's playing here and I get a lot of compliments wherever we go. We, we met here, the president of the federation, he said he's the top in the, in the, in the club. Um, we had in Maccabi Tel Aviv few players from, and of course the next panel will be with legends that plays in Israel. <laughs> uh, I remember also Gabo Marton and other players. So the relations, we don't have to speak too much about it. It's very close. We share the same ideas and we feel really friendship here in Hungary and uh, we highly appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Moran, for those uh, very nice words. I would just like to add on behalf of Ferenc Varos is that our club will be 125 years old next year. And uh, we had many people uh, from the Jewish community. Our first president uh, uh, was also Jewish. Um, and as you mentioned, Istvan uh, Potyotot, he was a leg legendary player uh, and a legendary coach in Hungary and abroad. And in uh, 1944, 1945, uh, he saved the lives of Jews and non-Jews alike. And we are working together with many people since three years to recognize him as one of the rights of the nations. It's not easy because for 80 years his uh, heroism was buried deep. And to find, actually we don't find uh, uh, the type of uh, evidence and uh, circumstances as you would uh, 40 or 50 years ago because many people are not living. But uh, we enjoy the support of many people. Uh, every additional support would uh, come handy, so to say. Um, but I'm more than confident that uh, eventually Yad Vashem will recognize him. Uh, even the fact that many, many decades have passed, but heroism, sacrifice, and supporting uh, the Jewish people, it's never too late to recognize. And the horrific days of uh, 7th of October also reminds us that many people after that uh, terrorist attack do, do support not only in words, which is important, but also in deeds and uh, that you can always count on Hungary, Ferenc Varos, the Hungarian government, the Hungarian FA, and the sporting uh, community of Hungary. Mr. Jakob Adas, Moran Meiri, Gustav Beiner, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. It was very important words.